I graduated last year from Centrale Supélec and from the MVA at ENS Cachan and I started a PhD a year ago at Facebook AI Research in Paris and with Inria Tot in Grenoble. So um, before entering my final year at Centrale, um, I I was looking for a field in mathematics uh, that had many applications in the industry. I was, I was very excited to find that machine learning and computer vision are fields um, that had been moving so fast in the past couple of years and where companies were setting up projects and teams. And so the data science program and the MBA were very natural choices for me. And they could, I, I, I found that they could get me closer to jobs where I could have a big impact. So I went on um, to, to a research internship at NetAtmo, where I um, prototyped uh, the vision algorithms for an outdoor camera, uh, which uh, was meant to do automated surveillance. And I had so much fun throughout that project that I decided to start a PhD. So if I were to summarize what Central Supelec brought me, I would say that they led me to entirely question what I thought I was looking for in my job. And once I'd found something that fit, they, they, they enabled me, they gave me the means for following um, two very well-acknowledged masters in that field and in the end to land my dream job. My PhD focuses on a computer vision problem called semantic segmentation. Now, um, in computer vision, the aim is for computers to understand images just like humans do. And um, so I work on semantic segmentation, which means that given an image or given a video, we want for each pixel to be able um, to say what type of object or what stuff the, the pixel belongs to. And this is a difficult task because um, it means that we have to mingle um, very global information, so contextual information, um, with local information because we're doing classification at the pixel level. And um, I'm mainly interested in proposing uh, new methods um, for semantic segmentation in video um, because in images um, the, the state-of-the-art methods have reached a performance that enable um, th that enable uh, people to start transferring um, those methods into uh, industrial applications. But for video, we still have a number of um, open questions to answer, and in particular, how do we deal with, um, with the temporal dimension that is added? How do we leverage um, this, um, the fact that from image to image, we have very redundant information, and we have, um, we, we have to, um, uh, take advantage of, the f of this fact and um, to, to be able to do something smarter than just um, applying our algorithms uh, image, image after image. Now the thing is, um, for image segmentation, we've reached those p the, this performance um, by uh, beforehand annotating a number of images. And um, in video, this this cannot be considered because we'll never be able to annotate as many videos as we as as we would need um, to apply the same methods as we have learned uh, as as we have um, um, developed for segmentation. So we need to find ways uh, to learn from what's called uh, weakly annotated data, meaning that the videos that we have may not be annotated at the pixel level, but they may be. Um, uh, annotated at the video level. So we, we know that um, there's a dog in the video or there's grass or whatever, but we, know, we don't know what the precise pixels are. And um, from um, this extra temporal information and from the huge amount of videos that we have out there, um, we hope to, to, to be able to learn through this 
this weaker information. And so we need, from, um, we need to propose uh, new methods that are adapted to video and to this weaker form of annotations. So I think that one of the biggest reasons um, for the weak proportion of women in scientific areas is uh, self-censorship. And unfortunately, this isn't going to change overnight. So one way to fight this is um, to have people they look up to or people they trust. Um, so this may be professors or um, family, parents, t uh, friends, to encourage them and um, tell them that um, tell them to give it a shot. And another way is um, because I think that many girls, uh, when they choose other paths than scientific and engineering roles, um, think they are doing it out, out of uh, personal preference. And I think these girls, in some cases, should just um, think a little bit harder about why they wouldn't enjoy being an engineer or being in a scientific role. And one of the reasons um, I love um, this role is that you, um, you get to... Um, it's one of the roles in which you can have... Um, sorry, it's one of the roles in which it most comes down to really thinking hard about the problem. And another reason is that um, when, if you are an engineer or in a scientific role, you can have a direct impact on uh, the way that technology will look like tomorrow. And technology is everywhere. So in so many ways, you can help shape the way that the world will look like tomorrow. And this ought to be exciting. <laughs>